pink and riddled with the plague. Let's see how I made him. The face plates I use are sculpted in 3D and printed on my Elegoo Mars 2 printer, which point I remove all the supports and wash them and cure them, but I get them ready by sanding them with some pretty coarse sandpaper. I tend to go pretty heavy here since the primer and the rest of the paint usually fills in any scarring, and frankly I, I just hate sanding. We want to give this guy the nice clear lens effect, so I'm painting some masking fluid on his circular peepers. Just one layer of masking fluid is always a nightmare to remove, so I always go about three layers. Time to prime. Molotow Black Primer is my go-to. Has a nice sheen and only needs about three light coats to completely coat the model. Now normally when I paint a Plague Doctor this would serve as the base coat too, however we're going for something a little bit different this time. So I'm going in with white to do the zenithal highlight of applying the direction of the light, but this will also serve as the real base coat here. I'm about to paint the metal areas around the eyes, so I'm mixing some metallic paint with some ink to create a nice pink metal. I'm dumb as a sack of rocks so I'm not sure if there is a pink metal. If there is, please educate me in the comments. But whatever this mythical substance is, he's got it. I use Viejo, at least I think that's how it's pronounced, uh, metal colour paints for the metal here. So it's pretty thin but still super pigmented so you only need about two coats of this. I apply a varnish between these stages and remove the masking fluid, but there I just painted the backs of the eyes. And now I'm mixing up the oil wash. Normally I make this a very, very dark colour, usually black mixed with a bit of red. However, since I'm also using this to pinken up that white, I'm not going as heavy with the dark shade. And here I am applying it pretty, pretty darn heavily to this guy. And to make sure he's more of a pale and not completely saturated pink, I'm dabbing off the excess to create that nice speckled effect. If I think I need to remove a bit of the excess, I dampen the brush in White Spirit and go in. And once that's dry, I go in with my floor polish varnish through the airbrush, and then my own personal mixed enamel varnish, thinned with White Spirit. And with that dry, it's time to apply some clear nail polish gel to the eyes and then throw it in the UV chamber. He is a full disembodied head, but he looks a little lonely there, so we need to give him a body. Time to hit the body farm and start mutilating some corpses. Here I am just hacking off the labels here on this poor soul. Just really giving him the business. Now it's time to slice off the face. This guy has printed on eyes, so they're just going to get covered. I don't have to peel them off like usual. But that doesn't mean he's going to be safe from having his brains pulled out. It's just the way it goes. Now that he has no mouth and must scream, it's time to paint him. I start with going a similar colour to the oil mix that I made. I'm going pretty heavy around the key areas, like around the ears and feet pads and where the face will connect. Then I go with a lighter coat around the remainder of the fur. The last step of the process is fusing the head and the body together. As usual, I put four holes around the resin print's head. This means I can thread through zip ties and lock them into the fur. This creates a nice anchor point, which then allows me to dab some hot glue around the perimeter of the face and push the fur in. I promise in the future I'll show this step too, it's just honestly the iPhone that I record on these, the storage sucks and I, I ran out. Sorry, but here's the finished product. Thanks so much for watching guys, if you'd like an art doll of your very own, you can check out the link in my description, because as you can see there's tons still available. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, do subscribe and catch you in the next one.